Hello, BookTube. I thought I'd give you an update on my capitalist plans for buying lots of books in the year 2020. Uh, and uh, in order to give you a brief update, of course, Grandpa Simpson style, I have to give you a long and complicated, boring story. <laughs> a while ago, uh, ooh, I don't even know, mid-2019, something like that, I got uh, an electronic screener. I, got a, I, get, I, I have a friend who, who works and has worked for a long time in Hollywood, and she sends me screeners of stuff, anything that is going the rounds, anything that she gets. She's in much the same position that I am with books, only with screeners and, you know, movie and TV related stuff. And she sends me electronic screeners. We have we have a great, great back and forth. She's constantly on me, booktube. <laughs> Forever and ever she was advocating that I go out to Hollywood. And she said, I, I will help you. I know other people. You're going to love them. You can work out here. <laughs> you, you can work out here. You write really fast and really well. So you can work out here. <laughs> and uh, lately, she, it's, it has sort of dawned on her after a whole lifetime of me refusing, politely refusing. That's probably not going to happen. Uh, and so lately she has been on me uh, in, a, in a slightly different route. She's been saying, well, you know, at the very least, you could write about this stuff. Because I have shown your email breakdowns of some of the screeners that I've sent you to some creative people and also to some executives, and they really like what they read. They like the way you think about these things. It's, a, it's as she puts it, as, as she says, one of her bosses said, oh, so this is what happens when a book critic looks at what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. I'm sure that it happened, but I don't know that, that I'm the first. I'm certainly not the first book critic to look at what Hollywood does. Uh, but she's been on me for years to say, well, you know, you, you want to write about this stuff. You're constantly, as in your position as a literary editor, you're constantly trying to find people to write about new TV and new movies when what you should be doing is writing about it yourself because <laughs> you're, you, you're good at it. You're entertaining at it. She keeps throwing back in my face the one or two movie or TV reviews that I have done in recorded history, and any time recently. She, she harped forever about, I wrote a review of the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie. She said, this is really biting, it's really reading, it's really readable, and it's really funny. And she went on and on about, I, did, I reviewed the first season of The Crown, and she did the same thing there. said, okay, so it wasn't a fluke, and it isn't just movies, you can do this with TV as well. So she's been on me to do that, and then lately, very lately, in the last three years, she's been on me to uh, make a YouTube channel, <laughs> to, to join the YouTube movie bros, as if there aren't enough of them already, good lord. And of course, because they are all exactly the same, I would have to act like them, which means I'd have to drop un totally unnecessary forced F-bombs every other sentence. <laughs> and I'd have to have a weird, a weird, barely suppressed sexual identification with Peter Parker of The Amazing Spider-Man. I don't think I'm fit to be a booktube, a YouTube movie bro. Uh, but she sends me these screeners anyway, and we have long, long, wonderful email exchanges about them. And I try to get to them, although most of my time is spent reading. <laughs> so, but but I, one of the things that she sent me was the first half of the first season of an Amazon TV series uh, called The Expanse based on a, series, a science fiction series of novels. And I loved the episodes that I saw. Just loved them. I wrote them down for her, wrote her a long, long response about what was good, what was bad, what was different, what was noteworthy, what some of the right decisions were aesthetically and character-wise, and what some of the wrong ones were. And uh, thought no more about it. We, we talked all about that, and then we went on to other things, I think. Uh, we went on to us and 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 uh, get out and a whole bunch of other stuff and, and stop talking about that uh but then just recently as i mentioned on this channel i had one of those pop-up things when i was buying something on amazon that i don't need uh one of those pop-up things saying try amazon prime for a month for free and see if you like it and i know how those things work <laughs> i know I, I i'm intimately familiar with how those things work they tell you sign up free for a month and then they bury any chance that they will notify you that your free month is about to end. Instead, they will charge you and just keep going. They're counting on the fact that you'll be hooked. And I thought, well, let's give them a chance. <laughs> let's, it's not that much money. It's like $12 a month. Let's give them a chance to hook me. Uh, 
so I tried it and I got some I've gotten been getting really good emails from a bunch of you because I asked in a video what the difference is between Amazon Unlimited and Amazon Prime and I've been, I've been getting all the inside the skivvy on how that works they're not actually the same thing um, and uh, I've also been hearing a lot from a lot a lot of you who are big fans of Amazon Prime who did the same thing I did clicked on that free offer thinking, eh, I'll give it up if I don't like it, and then we're instantly addicted. Uh, and I am pretty much instantly addicted. I doubt very much that I will be quitting Amazon Prime at least anytime soon. Uh, I'll, I'll take a while longer, a few more months, to see if I hit rock bottom, <laughs> see if I, if I play it out. Uh, and one of the things I immediately gravitated to when I got Amazon Prime, and all of a sudden on my... Uh, on my Kindle, my, my little handheld Star Trek data pad that I love so much, my bright red Kindle, all of a sudden, all of the uh, the menu options at the top are valid. They're all live now. <laughs> it used to be just books for it. Now, now they're all live. When I hit video, I get the whole offering of Amazon, of Amazon videos, and one of them is The Expanse. And so I immediately gravitated. There's tons of other stuff to look at. But I immediately gravitated to that and started watching where I left off. And now I'm totally, totally caught up in this thing. And being caught up in the story and being caught up in how well it's done, it's, it's extremely well done, and it is a perfect example of the type of uh, movie and TV science fiction that has become prevalent in the 21st century, where the future is no longer portrayed just by reflex as a great place, uh, where the tech is dirty and practical and clunky and often unreliable where the people don't like each other uh dystopias have not not actually dystopias because it's not it's not exclusively you know rack and ruin but uh the the science fiction a, a great deal of the science fiction of the 21st century turns the science fiction of the you know the we're in the uh of the beginning of the of the genre on its head because all of a sudden the advancements don't matter it's new ways to be addicted it's new ways to be depressed it's new ways to be oppressed uh, you have to get used to that yeah I have to get used to that <laughs> After, uh, having having uh, cut my teeth on Gene Roddenberry Star Trek that takes a little bit of getting used to uh, the two visions of the future with which I am intimately familiar are Gene Roddenberry's version of the future and the the world of the Legion of Superheroes, and in both cases, the future is something to look forward to, <laughs> so it takes a bit of getting used to, but I immediately gravitated to that series, and while I've been watching it and enjoying it so much, uh, I started to feel a little guilty about the books, because I've been reading the books piecemeal, and I've been enjoying them. As, as I get to them, I've been enjoying them, but I haven't prioritized them at all. I've, I actually haven't prioritized science fiction the way you'd think I would considering how passionately I love it and and uh, gradually I've been sort of deciding to change that and so I a while ago or in 2019 I ordered the box set of the first three Expanse novels these are uh, I know you're if you're in America you're probably familiar with them in your in your retail bookstore but it, it bears pointing out that these are gorgeous <laughs> right these are absolutely beautiful uh, big, sturdy trade paperbacks. Uh, of, and this is, uh, this is a box set of the first three. I noticed it only because uh, in 2019, um, Orbit came out with a box set of these first three books in hardcover. Uh, and I, <laughs> I saw that listing and thought, well, okay, I should, I should request that rather than buy the box set of the trade paperbacks because if it's, in, if it's new from Orbit in hardcover, I can probably get it from them. And then I thought, would you like the way the paperbacks look better? <laughs> not everything is, is dictated by whether or not something's free, right? <laughs> so, so I got this uh, from Barnes & Noble. Uh, and today, I went back to the bookstore. I, go to the, I, go to the, I have a, a big Barnes & Noble, the only big Barnes & Noble in Boston, uh, aside from the Boston University bookstore, which is now well out of my path. Uh, but there's a big uh, retail Barnes & Noble in uh, the Prudential Center in Boston. It's not that far out of my route. In fact, uh, several times a week, it's right on my route. Uh, so I go in there, and 
there is a small discrete menu of items that I can buy in a retail bookstore with a clear conscience. I can't go into a retail, a retail bookstore and buy a new hardcover book. That would be silly because I get new hardcover books for free. I, I get them in the mail. So it, it'd be a total waste, it'd be utterly ridiculous. Or to go in and buy remainders of old hardcovers that I've, that I've had and read and reviewed and then disposed of. But paperback backlist, I don't get that in the mail. New mass market paperbacks of romance or mystery or science fiction, I don't get that in the mail. So I, I have a reason to go into Barnes & Noble for my, uh, for my consumer year. And so I went today and I got volume four and volume five of the Expanse trilogy I'm, uh, series. Now I'm nowhere near the end. There are plenty more books. I got Sybil Burn. That's number four. Again, beautiful. All of them come now with this. The, the earlier artwork for these things didn't have that. In fact, I wonder if it's uh, I wonder if it's in these earlier ones in this box set. Let's, let's take a look and see. Uh, I think it probably is. They probably missed no opportunity. Yeah, yeah, okay. So th th they all have uh, that on there now uh, because the, the series is, is a hit. The series has been renewed for season after season. So I got uh, volume four, which is Sibylla Burn. And then volume five, which is Nemesis Games. In these, in these big, uh, extremely durable trade paperbacks. And I will go and get the others in, in turn. Uh, because I know, I, I feel a little guilty for how I've treated this series. The series is, it's uh, ambitious. And the, all the volumes that I've read, I've really enjoyed. And I've read them piecemeal, and I haven't even read them in order. So it's high time that I did. It's high time that I went back and read the whole thing. Especially since... I'm in love with the series on, on, on Amazon. So, so that was my uh, Conspicuous Consumption Monday, was that I went, I went and got two beautiful new trade paperbacks of, of uh, science fiction uh, to add to my collection. <laughs> and, and when I was there at the bookstore, I was browsing around a bit, and uh, I saw two other things. I saw two other things uh, that I that I kind of wanted. I, in fact, I had them in my hand at one point, and then I thought, okay, well, there's loyalty to buying books, and then there's insanity. And the one was uh, The War of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, uh, volume one in his Stormlight Archive series, which is an absolutely gorgeous cover. Uh, I had that in my hand in a trade paperback, but the uh, uh, I see that uh, used. I see that at the Brattle and at charity shops all the time. And I also had, uh, what was it, uh, A Dance with Dragons, the, the last uh, Song of Ice and Fire book that George R. R. Martin wrote, the, the big one with the gray cover. I've had that from time to time in a hardcover and, and paperbacks and mass markets. I really like it. I really like that volume, even as a standalone. I really do. Uh, I don't have a copy at the moment, but I, I had the Sanderson and the Martin in my hand, and I thought, no, no, you see those plenty used, and you're in no hurry for them. So it's pure profligacy to be paying $20 a piece for them. Uh, that's not true with the Expanse books, these big, beautiful Expanse books. I never see them used, so I, I got them today, and we will see what tomorrow brings. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I wanted to take this opportunity to show you my latest shameful capitalist acquisitions and also to recommend the expanse <laughs> the series uh if you if you have amazon prime and you have their video system and you haven't watched it yet you might really like it it's it's really quite good uh but anyway i'm gonna wrap this up uh but i'll be back thank you comrades <laughs>